that we might never know all of the names because not all of the people there are notables or famous and, and won't necessarily be missed from public appearances over the next few weeks. And so I, I'm not sure we're ever going to know the total number of people who test positive for COVID-19 after attending that event. The more unnerving part of it, too, is that, you know, the people who are not household names, the people who are not necessarily making announcements about their positive tests. I mean, everybody who went to that event knows they were there. The whole country knows it was a super spreader event. Hopefully everybody who was at that event is getting tested. But if they're not famous people and they're not making a public pronouncement about their test result, the the ripple effects, the, the people they may have infected since coming home from that event may never know that they had a one-person or two-person removed connection to that thing that happened in Washington. That's why you want there to be rigorous contact tracing for an event like that, if that, in fact, was the place where lots and lots of people got infected. The fact that the White House isn't doing that contact tracing is gobsmacking. Uh, yes. And uh, I mean, when you think of someone like, say, William Barr, um, and his, he was right there in the thick, of, you know, very close to Kellyanne Conway, who's infected with it. Uh, we have reason to believe there's evidence that the president was going to try to never reveal that he tested positive, that that, that may be the way this uh, was first being dealt with in the White House. Uh, and there are people whose credibility is at the point where uh, I just don't know. If William Barr tests positive, will we ever know? I don't know. Yeah. Well, and, you know, people who have a, have a right, whether or not they're going to make these things publicly known. But contact tracing is, it has a public health purpose. It's not something that you, you know, you have a luxury to do or not. Just as a responsible human being, there has to be contact tracing so that people who you may have infected can find out if they're infected so they cannot give it to their grandmother and kill her. And I mean, this is, the, you know, trace, test, trace, and isolate is the what it, what we should have been doing as a country from the beginning. The fact that the White House still isn't committed to that very basic idea, even at an event at which the president himself was infectious, it's just it's dystopian. I just don't. I mean, if you care so little about other people that you don't try to alert them that they might be inadvertently infected, I I don't know what to say to you. Uh, well, you have said a lot in your hour, and we will now proceed with ours, and we will continue our struggle of trying to figure out what to say every night, because it's never easy. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Lawrence. Thanks. Thank you. He is a weak man who has always longed to be a strong man, and he is a weak man's idea of a strong man. The Trump era is possible only because so many people have been so fooled by fake strength. Everything I just said was written by Anand Jiradadas, who will join us at the end of this hour on a night when we need a big thinker, who happens to be a brilliant writer, to help us understand what we've been through over the weekend and today and the week that preceded that, what we're going through right now, this moment that can feel so overwhelming to many of us, but has also been energizing to voters who have now decided to give Joe Biden his biggest lead in the polls yet. The latest NBC poll shows the first chipping away of the Trump base by Joe Biden, and that poll was taken before Donald Trump was forced to admit that he is not Superman and that he tested positive for coronavirus, an illness that he recently said affects, quote, these were his words, virtually nobody. He is now one of those nobodies. The President of the United States was asked two questions today, both of which he refused to answer. Mr. President, how many staff are sick? How many of your staff are sick? Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you think you might be a super spreader, Mr. President?
Before the president left a fully equipped hospital to resume residence in the White House, which has the equivalent of a very good small town hospital inside it, his doctor, who is a Navy commander who takes orders from the president, was asked what it would be like when the president returned to the White House. He's physically going to be in the White House, and how do, what does that look like? How do you keep him safely quarantined? I wish I could go into that more, um, but, but I just can't. Here is what it looked like. A Trump TV production of Donald Trump returning to the White House, taking off the mask immediately, not isolating at all, having several staffers hover around him and come within inches of him while forcing a still photographer and a video photographer to stand very close to him to capture images for his re-election campaign where he is now running 14 points behind Joe Biden. That NBC poll was taken before Donald Trump's supporters discovered that he too could be infected with the coronavirus. The poll shows Joe Biden with a 14 point lead and it shows Donald Trump having lost four percentage points of his base of support, dropping 43 to 39 in that poll with Joe Biden now running at 53. Donald Trump has now released the campaign video that he made when he arrived at the White House tonight. It is a video of a very sick man with very sick ideas. In the video, the president of the United States, who ignores his coronavirus task force, actually says, quote, I learned so much about coronavirus, which is something no sane president would admit at this stage of the coronavirus pandemic. He also says this about the coronavirus, don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. You're going to beat it. As of tonight, 211,052 Americans did not beat it. They have died from the coronavirus. Donald Trump is telling you, though, that you're going to beat it. Donald Trump is telling you, don't be afraid of the deadly coronavirus. No one on earth has done more to spread the coronavirus than Donald Trump. That was the finding of a study last week that showed Donald Trump was the single biggest purveyor of false information about the coronavirus in the world. That false information has killed people in the United States and around the world, and now Donald Trump himself is a possible spreader of the actual virus directly to the people around him. The Washington Post quotes one Secret Service agent saying, quote, He's not even pretending to care now. Another Secret Service agent told a confidant, he's never cared about us. Now, I'm going to show you another deeply perverse statement that Donald Trump made tonight on that video, and I will let him say it in his own words, with his own voice. You will hear that, but with the appropriate warning about the utter insanity of it when I introduce it during our discussion, when we will have experts ready to immediately dismantle the madness of what you will hear the president say. The video he recorded is much too dangerous to play in its entirety for a television audience. So we will handle it carefully in our discussion. Once again today, the president's doctor, possibly on orders from his commander in chief, refused to answer the most important questions. On testing, can you tell us when he had his last negative test? Was it Thursday? Was it Wednesday? When, do you remember when he had his last negative test? Uh, I don't want to go backwards. Another version of that question is, what did the president know and when did he know it? When did he know he was exposed to COVID-19? When did he know he had the infection, COVID-19? Did he go to the debate in Cleveland on Tuesday knowing that he would test positive at the debate location? And is that why he avoided being tested at the debate location? It is now well documented that Donald Trump has been running a cover-up of the spread of the coronavirus in the White House. The Wall Street Journal reports President Trump didn't disclose a positive 
result from a rapid test for COVID-19 on Thursday while awaiting the findings from a more thorough coronavirus screening. According to people familiar with the matter, Mr. Trump received a positive result on Thursday evening before making an appearance on Fox News in which he didn't reveal those results. Instead, he confirmed earlier reports that one of his top aides had tested positive for coronavirus and mentioned the second test he had taken that night for which he was awaiting results. As the virus spread among the people closest to him, Mr. Trump also asked one advisor not to disclose results of their own positive test. Don't tell anyone, Mr. Trump said, according to a person familiar with the conversation. After the White House press secretary was forced to announce today that she now has coronavirus, ABC reports multiple White House sources told ABC News there is a full-blown freakout in the administration waiting to see who will be next to test positive with aides not trusting each other and some trying to find ways to avoid coming into work at all. The sources added that there weren't many staffers in the West Wing Monday afternoon and there was a lot of regret for not taking the coronavirus more seriously by not wearing masks and social distancing regularly. Leading off our discussion tonight, Shannon Pettypiece, senior White House reporter for NBC News Digital, and Dr. Zeke Emanuel, former White House health policy advisor during the Obama administration and MSNBC senior medical contributor. And Zeke, now that you're with us, I think it is safe with warning to play what the president said in his campaign video that he recorded at the White House tonight. Uh, viewers should know that what you're about to hear is utterly insane and dangerous. Let's listen to this. I know there's a risk, there's a danger, but that's okay. And now I'm better and maybe I'm immune, I don't know. But don't let it dominate your lives. Get out there, be careful. We have the best medicines in the world. Dr. Emanuel, your reaction to that? I think insane is right. Uh, be careful. This man was anything but careful. And he set a norm that derided and mocked people who were careful, who kept six feet distance, who wore a mask, who did hand hygiene, and who did not go into crowds larger than 10 or 20 people. Uh, his entire event for Amy Coney Barrett uh, was, you know, a violation of every one of the be careful requirements uh, set out by public health experts. Um, so he he's just doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's obvious that contracting COVID and obviously having difficulty breathing hasn't made him learn anything. Shannon, uh, with the number goes up uh, virtually every day now, uh, we had the White House press secretary forced to announce today uh, that she has uh, tested positive for the virus. Um, will we ever know everyone who, has, who will have tested positive for the virus who was in attendance at the Rose Garden introduction of the Supreme Court nominee? You know, it's interesting. I'm not sure we'll ever even know how many people in the White House are infected because a lot of staffers are telling us they're essentially on their own. You mentioned, Lawrence, the contact tracing that doesn't seem to be occurring from this Rose Garden event and a number of sources who have been there are saying they have not been contacted by anyone. Uh, within the White House itself, though, you mentioned Kaylee McEnany, two of her uh, deputies announced today that they were infected. Um, but other than that, other staffers who aren't showing up at the White House and getting a test when they go in, if they are now deciding to stay home, uh, they're not getting testing. So we might not know how many people in the White House are being infected. And a lot of White House staffers aren't routinely tested. Those who are in that senior level who come in regular contact with the president and then, then the very top advisors, they tend to get a bit of routine testing. But on the lower level, those people don't. And certainly on the the staff level or people who work in the residence or on the maintenance end, you know, those are the people who are, are still coming into the White House regularly. They don't have the option of working from home. Uh, and they're essentially left on their own to try and navigate this virus because the White House is not changing their protocols at all to try and track down how many people in the White House may be ill at this point. Uh, Zeke, uh, the, the president said tonight you're in his uh, campaign video, he told everyone in the country that if you do get this virus, 
you will beat it. You're going to beat it, he said repeatedly. He's saying that while people are dying as we speak right now, dying of coronavirus in America tonight, they will die tomorrow in America. They will die for the rest of the year from coronavirus and beyond. And this president doesn't recognize now that people die from it because he has not yet died from it. Uh, absolutely. We're likely to end the year with 300,000 people who've died from COVID. Uh, that's the confirmed people. And most experts like myself uh, uh, suggest that it's going to be actually much higher. That will make it the third leading cause of death in the United States, higher than stroke. Um, I would just also remind your viewers, Herman Cain got exposed at, in Tulsa at the rally uh, led by President Trump. Uh, and it took five weeks, but five weeks later, uh, uh, at the end of July, uh, he had died from COVID. He too mocked the chance, the possibility of getting infected and the possibility that bad things could happen. Uh, the president has repeatedly shown himself insensitive to the impact that he has on other people. And if in fact he took a test on Thursday and it was positive and then he went to New Jersey, um, that would be uh, totally irresponsible. I mean, it's beyond words how selfish uh, that would be. And if any one of those people who was a potential donor in New Jersey gives him money, uh, that seems really foolish to a man who would willingly endanger you. Tonight, uh, Lester Holt asked Joe Biden uh, his reaction to the news uh, when he learned that Donald Trump was infected. Let's listen to this. When you hear that this president was infected with COVID-19, were you surprised? Quite frankly, I wasn't surprised. For the last three months, three times a week, I'm on the telephone and on Zoom with some of the leading immunologists in the nation. And they go through everything that's happening. And, uh, and so the idea that uh, COVID does not spread in proximity when you don't have a mask on, when you're not socially distancing, when there's large groups of people, when you're inside, particularly even when you're outside, that's not surprising. Uh, Shannon, Joe Biden uh, may be speaking for the vast majority of Americans, not being surprised that Donald Trump got infected, given that he's violated every protocol. Well, and that's one of the messaging struggles the president is in right now. So he is now portraying this this message of having mission accomplished on the virus, coming out victorious, his allies referring to him as a warrior, the president now saying, don't worry, I can beat this, you can beat this too, go about your life. That plays very well, obviously, with President Trump's base. A, a lot of those same voters, you know, when I talked with the Trump rally, they tell me the same thing, that they don't think coronavirus is that bad, they think the media overhypes it, they don't think the death numbers are as bad as they appear. It is not helping him with that group of voters who he needed to reach out to and who, at the beginning of this process, advisors were telling me they saw an opportunity here for the president to be empathetic and connect to people who either have lost a loved one or are concerned about their, their own health and safety and to really take this seriously. He is passing by that moment. It looked like maybe for a day or a couple hours, he was, this had sort of woken him up to the seriousness of this virus, and he was going to be taking it more seriously from now on. The message he has left with today is the same message that has been turning off seniors, women, suburban voters, college educated voters, nearly every group, it appears, in these polls, except for white working class men, uh, against him. And it has the number one issue in this race is now coronavirus. Whether they like it or not, they cannot change the subject. And the president's messaging coming out of this is disconnected with those groups he needs to be appealing to most. There are a minimum of, say, a million voters out there in this country who know uh, one of the 210,000 uh, people who have already died from this in this country and what